forever. Dog. She would do anything to be popular. This week on the podcast, Caroline B. Cooney's The Cheerleader. Welcome to Teen Creeps, the podcast that discusses YA Pulp Fiction. I'm one of your hosts, Lindsay Katai. I'm another one of your hosts, Kelly Nugent. And it's The Cheerleader by Caroline B. Cooney, Whee! which is the beginning of a series. Yes. I did not know About a that. vampire. Yeah. Um, you wouldn't think with it being called The Cheerleader. No. You actually wouldn't think that so little cheerleading happens in a book called The Cheerleader. It's a very different book from R.L. Stein's Cheerleaders. That was like cheerleading, yes. cheerleading, cheerleading. Slight death, cheerleading. Slight death in one very intense <laughs> death, death cheerleading. cheerleading. This was like, I-, I liked this book. I did too. I thought it was really creepy. It is really creepy. His, the, the fact that she never goes into how... The vampire is sucking the life out of them is very interesting. It's like it's just a shadow that falls over them. Yeah. Yeah. And he just mm. kind of like absorbs their energy or whatever. Yeah. Um, I also like that he's ne- that the vampire is never fully on page. Yeah. He's not really a an entity even. Yeah. He reminds me of the beast from um, Over the Garden Wall. Yeah. Where it's like this nebulous kind of like scary spindly like yeah. thing. Shadowy yeah. thing. But like there she did have like details, right? Like his skin like looked like mushrooms. Yeah, he's like he decaying. Looks, yeah, and his fingernails are gross. Like Nosferatu nails. Yeah. Like long, like he's long, long. Classic vampire. He's on claws. Do you want to read the back of the book? Yeah. She wants it all, but he wants more. The cheerleader, the beautiful popular girl who sparkles with energy and excitement. The girl everyone looks at with envy. The girl Althea longs to be. Althea is a nobody. Invisible. She gets no phone calls, shares no laughter, has no friends. Until she meets him. Suppose, he says with an evil smile, that I could make you popular. All Althea has to do is agree to a simple bargain. An evil bargain. And she becomes a cheerleader. But Althea wants more. And she'll do whatever she has to to get it. Uh, Kind of a lie right at the end. Yeah, I, it kind of like villainizes her a little yeah, more. Yeah, it makes her seem like she goes like drunk with power or something. But she's yeah. pretty uh she's pretty boring throughout. Yeah, she's boring. I mean the only thing she like we know about her is that she wants to be popular. Yeah. And that she has like a whispery voice. Yes. That's she true. She talks like this. Do we even know what she looks like? I can't remember. Uh dark hair. <laughs> Here we go. I'm like right here at the beginning with her. Um, Althea, Althea, gentle, demure posture. Um, oh, that's what I like to know about a character is their posture. Demure. Is their posture is demure their posture? or slutty? <laughs> um, <laughs> Do they have the posture of a slut? <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like demure is like oh, your shoulders you know are know the in. way she hunches. She wants it. Yeah. Maybe you're like, you like walk like like hips first if you're slutty or like chest first <laughs> um let's see she stuff about her in middle school uh althea then becomes boring which like frankly aside from the fact that she has a vampire in her life she's pretty boring yes that's her whole problem but you know what the thing is yes i like that she's so boring for this purposes of this book where it's like it does explain, yeah, I think, yeah, I agree. And because this book seems to pounce on something that so many people wanted, which is about like popularity, like, and popularity not meaning just that you're better than everybody, but because you're better than everybody, you have people in your corner, people care about you. Yeah. Other people want to talk to you because you've gotten a seal of approval. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I do think it's funny how, like basic a notion it is he's like what do you want out of anything i could give you and she's like friends i know and he's like how do you think you could get that like what would make you happen and she's like cheerleader i know (laughs) so here's the thing she has a pretty like like she has a clear line i mean she's like 
I do like that when she's like friends, I feel like the vampire's like, woo, okay. Like, all right. Oh, this is darker than oh, I that's thought. That's easy. Uh, I thought maybe you'd want to be the richest person in the world, but uh, yeah, I can make you a cheerleader. I, I think it's, so Althea is boring. Yes. Has a cool name. She has a cool name. Um, but I did, I, I found her really endearing and this was, and I sort of felt a kinship with her when she like just wanted everyone to be happy. Yeah. She wanted Michael and Constance to stay together. She was like, they're too beautiful a couple for me to want Ryan and Michael to fight over me. And She's like, yeah. I'm fine with just Ryan. And I, I just want to be Constance's friend. She's so pretty and nice. At first, yeah, because wasn't she like lusting after Michael at first? And then yeah, she, that was like, the first boy who mind. occurred to her. And yeah. then Ryan started showing her attention and she was happy with that. And then Michael started showing her attention and it was m- implied heavily probably that the vampire arranged for michael and constance to fight Mm -hmm. to try to drive michael to althea yeah but because they really were in love like they were being drawn back to each other Mm -hmm. and althea is like i'm fine with that that's right that's as it should be i also felt such a kinship with her to borrow your phrasing um when so she becomes friends with Becky. That was the next thing I was going to say. And when Becky calls her and she's like, oh, to have a friend call you at night and to be able to have someone to talk about the day with. I was like, girl. Oh, ouch. Ouchie. Ouchie. She really like it wasn't just it wasn't vanity. No, she wasn't wishing to be popular out of vanity. That's the thing I just realized. That's why she is likable. It's because she really she just wanted friends she just wanted people to talk to her she wanted it to be like when she was in elementary school and friends were easy and she had jenny which is another very sad thing oh jenny um yeah but the other thing i was going to say about becky where i was like you're such a good person apart from feeding your friends to a vampire yeah. was when so jenny has already been eaten at this point and becky and she are going to have a sleepover and, she, oh, and yeah. becky's like If you already have plans with Ryan, I totally understand because I have to, like, if you want to switch nights, like, Ryan comes first and Althea's remembering that, like, that's what ended hers and Jenny's friendship Mm -hmm. is because Jenny got a boyfriend and then she stopped wanting to hang out with Althea. And Althea is like, no, I would never do that, Becky. We are absolutely hanging out tonight. I was like, Althea's such a good person. I know. And then, like, Becky, like, like is like oh are you sure like i would understand if you have to move it and she's like no like she's like he I, would have to absolutely like, not i would move him and yeah. then like we would hang out like we, we had already plans. have plans yeah i was like that is so <sighs> nice that is she so really nice. just like she really just wanted friends and she wanted all of her friends to be happy oh and she like goes out of her way to make sure becky feels included mm-hmm. when she starts hanging out with the older yeah cheerleaders like, yeah like this is so sad and also like and the thing is at the same time so she's like being so kind and whatever but she's also being like a little bit you know like um ah you know what i have the power so i'll be gracious and oh, like no make bless sure. oblige yeah yeah <laughs> very a little like that too which i think a lot of you know uh, we would end up being like that if we were like instantly popular yeah i'm and i guess like when you to realize that you have like Jenny, when she ran into her in the halls, was angling for an invite to her party. Yes. And Althea knew that. And she was like, oh, she's trying to get an invite out of me. And that is mine to give. And so I shall. Yeah, she's very, (laughs) she's like, 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 at no point does it like warp how she behaves with people. No, she just acts like a little like. Like a little queen. Like she yeah. like I could like, picture her I wearing am a, I am a a benevolent, benevolent ruler. ruler. <laughs> yeah. I could see her wearing like a little like crown with that um like spotted fur and then like red yes. velvet and then like a little <laughs> scepter and she's like, And I shall invite you to my party. <laughs> and she's got the, yeah. she's got the cape that's like got a gold chain yes. and a velvet yes. cape with the fur around yes, there. Yes, yeah. Yes. Just trim. Yes. Um I guess so super, super quick. Althea, there's a vampire who lives in Althea's house. She accidentally let it like lets in this it out. Ta- creepy tower. 
It's a cupola, right? Yeah. Also, I looked up how to say that word. Oh, good. I don't think it says it's a cupola. No. Cupola. Cu- now I've forgotten. Oh, no. Cupola. It's cupola. I like think it's cupola because it's C-U-P-E-O. Cupola. Yeah. So it's a cupola. I don't know she that calls it, it a says tower, that. But, but it's it is. like, yeah, it's like clear that she's got like a Victorian house. There's like yes. a tower thing. Like in My Sweet Audrina. Yes. Um, She, act- she like opens the door which apparently lets him out he's like hey what do you want she's like i want friends okay how i think i would get them by becoming a cheerleader and he's like done uh you just have to feed me someone and she's like um (laughs) what he's like don't worry they'll just be very tired who and she's like well i guess celeste yeah and well and that first part is out of jealousy because she's like celeste doesn't deserve this she's too like she's a freshman like why does she get to be popular But she's super guarded in her jealousy. Yes. Like she doesn't want to be jealous of C- Celeste, but she can't help but be yes. jealous of Celeste. She also does play dumb. She really does. About I was what like, the vampire You should doing. have a few follow-up questions, Althea, because he's just like, she'll be very sleepy. Do not worry about it. And then like, like even after... what do you after, mean by sleepy? Just like real tired. Okay. Like, even after when she sees what that means and then she has to pick someone else, she's like, well, I mean, it like Celeste seems fine. And it's well, like, girl, yeah. no, Celeste is she not is fine. She is dragging. She's like a little like ghost person. It's like, even... <laughs> this is stupid because I'm like, Althea, you dumb dumb. Of course, she's not just going to be sleepy. But when she shows up and she is like the walking dead and yeah. she like can barely lift her limbs. See, I thought he was just going to suck her blood and she was going to die. Oh. So in a way, he was telling the truth because like she's still alive. Yeah. But all of her life force is gone. She's like tripping, <laughs> trying to walk down yes. stairs. She can't even like lift books and she's like, like her feet are like tripping over each step. Yeah. It's. She's very unwell. But yeah, so he's like, you know, just give me Celeste. And she's like, "Eh, okay. Like, oh, yeah, I guess that's okay. How does she, how does she give him Celeste? She walks over to the popular kids table Mm -hmm. and starts making conversation. She's trying to get Celeste to come over and it goes really well, right? Because here's the thing. It ends up being very easy. The popular girls are like, not that mean they're not mean at all they're just they're like only mean, we're not friends with you so i'm not going to be especially warm yeah. they're only mean when he the takes vampire it away. like takes away her popularity yeah. and then it's like crazy yeah and i i assume the same way that he i mean he really does just like wish granted gives her popularity like yeah. suddenly she is walking around school with like a golden halo and just everybody wants to talk to her even before she's become a cheerleader. It's like that scene in Teen Witch where they're like... Yes. Where everyone's like, everyone's like, Althea! Althea! Wow, Althea! You look amazing! Sit by me, Althea! <laughs> like, everyone. Hey, Althea, why are we wearing clothes today? I know. It's just like, <laughs> like nothing. The, like, because they don't have anything to compliment her on, so they're just like, Althea, you have a locker! Awesome! Like, yeah, oh, my, my locker's by your locker. <laughs> That's pretty cool. And she's like, this is what it's like she's to be like, popular. Ah. But yeah, they're not even rude to her when she walks no, up to their table. They're just like, like oh, they're hi. a little like thrown. They're like, oh, oh, hi. I really, this is the only page I marked, aka I took a photo of. Um, See you later. Hey, let me help Edwin get under some yellow blanket. Edwin oh. has decided it's bedtime. Oh, yellow blanket. Recording at my house today. <laughs> um, uh oh. Are my party neighbors about to start partying? Fuck yeah. They usually save it for the weekend. Oh, well. I can't it's fucking wait. Fine. We should get invited. So if you hear a party, that's what's going on. It, there, it's not gonna Nobody ever out. heard the improv class happening Like next roaring. Door. So it's Maybe fine. a couple of times. Anyway, so I just really liked... Because Caroline B. Cooney is a an above average author for these types yes. of books. Yeah. Um, And I just really liked <laughs> the way this was phrased. Her heart filled with longing to be special, the way they were. She inched closer to hear their affectionate, silly talk. Althea paused next to Celeste's table, pretending her attention was caught by something beyond. An interesting tableau, perhaps, of dietitians and cooks. Yeah, and the way that she insinuates herself in the group. (laughs) So she's like, oh, look at the, oh, this poster is so interesting. And they're like ignoring her and they're talking about the car. Mm-hmm. 
And then she just like gets, she like walks into the group and just like stands there. <laughs> and then someone's like, oh, hi, Althea. And she's like, they know my name. <laughs> it's so- and then they're like totally perfectly polite to her. They're so nice and, to her. Uh, like, they're like, oh, hi, Althea, right? Yeah, you live in that house with like the yeah, like their the creepy like, tower. House. Is it haunted? And she's like, uh huh. I've yes. never seen a ghost because <laughs> yeah. she doesn't like to lie. Also, the way she talks is really funny. Like she's like, um, so she's trying to get Celeste to like want to come over to her house, and she like Celeste like mentions like so so they're like, oh, is it haunted? And she's like, I've never seen a ghost. And then so they stop being interested, and she's like. Fuck, I have to get their attention back. So she's like, we do have a shuttered room, of course. And they're like, what? She's like, yes, no one goes in the shuttered room. She says, there's a room in the attic, the circular tower. You may have admired it when you've driven by. <laughs> what a weird. <laughs> she so may have weird. admired my <laughs> circular tower as you have perchance ridden by. She's very dorky. Yes. She's very dorky and she's very strange, but I do like her. Yes. Because the thing is, she's the only one who talks. We- she does talk weirdly throughout the whole book and everyone else is pretty normal. I never really thought about that. She's pretty weird. Here's what I would like to know just to take a quick detour. Where the fuck are her parents? I Here's the thing. What? I thought we In were going fuck? to get a twist that she was like I thought that crazy too. or dead. I thought that too. Or I thought something. that it was going to turn out she was the, the vampire. vampire. Or like it was like another personality or something. Turns out it's no. not. Parents are nowhere. And then they even say she like. She never talks about them even. No. N- not once mentioned. And when well, she has that huge party, where are they? Well, I mean, she, it's like they sort of, they get mentioned. Where? Because no I don't remember them ever being mentioned. There's like it at the very end when they move away. No, are they? I made never sure to check because when she, they say she moves away, they say when Althea moved away. I was like, by herself. Yeah, where are the, the parents? The, there's no interaction. No there's parents. no explanation as to where they are. Yeah, as to why they're not there. Other other kids are like, oh, I know my parents are this, my parents yes. are that, and and Althea is like, oh yeah, I can't really. I can't have a sleepover that night. And they they just jump to, I know my parents are so uptight too, but like Althea never mentions She never them. says the word parents. It's bizarre. She's like, I, you know, she's like, well, I can't have people over that night because you know how it is. And they're like, oh yeah, my parents or whatever. And I was like, oh, this is planting the seed of like, she's like nuts. I did not know what the deal was. And she talks so weird. So I thought maybe she was like a Victorian ghost or something, but she wasn't. Um, but so she's like trying to invite um, Celeste over because she's like, I got to fucking get Celeste to this vampire. So she's like, would you like to come to my home? And Celeste says, like, I can't. I have cheerleading practice, of course. And like, I loved that when she loses her goddamn mind over the word, of course. Yes. Fr- she's like, how dare she, she, of course, just hadn't said, of course. She's like, well, she sealed her fate. Yeah. There was nothing I could do. She yeah. said, of course. So, of course, she's going to the vampire. Like, how how brazenly she said the words of course like as if i should have expected that like i have cheerleading practice of course it was like yeah, of course of course so then she sacrifice well so she how does she does she just drive she by, goes right? by the cheerleading practice right, she stops by and just watches like, watches and then Celeste is hanging out after because she has to wait to get a ride home because she lives like an hour away or something. Yeah, she lives, she lives really a long like ways over away. an hour away, like in the, a rural area. And she's like, anytime anyone gives me a ride, they like only ever do it once and they never want to do it again. Yeah. Which I get it's it. Far. It's far. So Althea offers to drive her home and I guess is maybe like, hey, do you want to see my house first? I think. Yeah, so she like does like a detour thing. So she goes and she, uh, and just by bringing her by allows the vampire like supernatural access to Celeste's life force or something. All she has to do is bring him under his like shadow. Right. It's very nebulous. Yeah, he can like suck the energy out of them from like a certain distance, but it turns out not from that far. Yes. Because he can't do it at Becky's house. 
that whole section started to get very vague. Yeah. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. Oh, huh? But for a lot Are of it, you I was eating like, Becky? Wait. No, you've eaten Althea? Althea's going to die. No, now no, Althea's Althea. fine. No, now Becky's tired. Becky has the flu. Uh-oh, he got Becky next day at school. No, Becky's here. Becky's She's fine. fine. Everyone's fine. What? And then who did he end up taking? Nobody. He he was just like, I couldn't I take think, her. Because it's after Jenny, right? Yeah, it's after Jenny when she was going to go have the sleepover at Becky's thinking that that would keep Becky safe. Um, and it's, he says, I think she goes and she tries to close the shutters and he's going to take her. Oh yeah. And she gets trapped in that circular yeah. tower. But then another totally vague thing I don't understand happens, which is that Ryan drives up and she's like, turn up your music and dance. Okay. I and did he not does. understand. And it's like, <laughs> oh, cause the vampire hates loud music. Which was said, and joy. It's like yeah. it gets. It got so vague because it's like it was really hard for her to close the shutters, and but then they started closing on her, mm -hmm. and then she was stuck in there. And she's like, "Oh, I almost realized something." And then Ryan drives up, That's and she's when I was like, like, "Oh, she's the fucking vampire." Yeah, I thought that too. Like by closing the shutters, she was closing herself in there. Because what if? What if, okay, so she's like starting to remember something and she's trapped in there. Mm -hmm. And then the book ends with with her opening and like with Althea, like the door opens and then she sees herself opening it. And then she's like, I'm free. I'm the vampire. And then it like Ooh. becomes her. So it's like, it's just a cycle. Forever. Cool. Well, it's not what happened. That would have been cool. Instead, it is very strange. She it's does. It's just so, it's like. The dancing thing was really I weird. I did not understand the, <laughs> the dancing, dancing thing. I was like, what? She's, so she's like, um, you know, she's already fed like a couple people to the vampire. Jenny was an accident. Because she accidentally hugged her. She accidentally did the thing that was supposed to be a signal to the vampire that like, yes, you may eat this friend. He's like, simply put your arm around the person that you want me to eat and face them towards the hemlock grove. Oh, right. And, she, and she's like, no, okay. Yeah. And then <laughs> she's like, I'm not saying no, but uh, I'll see you. <laughs> then she has a party and it is like a rockin' pizza party. Oh my God. Everyone, every room is doing something different. It's crazy. It's so fun. Everyone's having so it's much so, fun. It's just, good clean fun and I, I know and every <laughs> like she's like walking it's like that scene in um like boogie nights when you're like going through the yeah. party like it's like that she's like walking and everyone's like hey althea althea it's yeah. like a, a long shot um and then um uh she overhears jenny because she was so gracious to invite jenny to the party so gracious and jenny's like talking about like oh my god back when we were in middle school we used to eat a bunch of Cheetos. I don't know oh, what yeah, it was. It was something like, something like, like oh, marshmallows until we puked oh, or like something. Donut eating contest. That's what it was. Cl very fresh teen fun. Good, clean, white bread American fun. Yes. And all the other teens are like, oh, you can't be serious. Like, <laughs> that's wild. And she's like, you know, I was always friends with, with Althea from the beginning. And then she's it's like, like oh, let's hug. And they like, like run. It's like, let's be best friends again. What even came between us? When I'm like, girl, you know what came between you. Yeah, you did. Yeah. So then they start. You stupid bitch. Running. Jenny, you're a bitch. That's the thing. Here's the thing. When people first start dating someone, I'm always like, I understand you're in la la land. Yeah. You get to be in like, you're going to blow people off for this yeah. person. But Jenny's reaction was cold. What was it? It was oh, something it was mean. along. It was it was mean. mean. It, it was wasn't mean. just I'm breaking plans with you in favor of a guy. It was like grow up. This is how it is. You choose guys. You're just not. You don't understand because you don't have oh, a that's guy. Right. She's like you were too young. Yeah, like, you're stuck in like junior high or whatever. That sucks. I feel like really maybe sucks. she shouldn't have been so villainized. Like I feel like she could have just been like Althea, like. You understand, right? Please. Like, I really want to go out with this guy. Please, please. You, you know, right? That, like, guys come first and then, like. Maybe it was more like that, but I was reading no, it differently. No, no, no. She was mean. Oh, I remember. Because okay. she was like, hello, Althea, you ugly lump of blob. <laughs> like, don't God, you, you know stupid that. stupid chunk of flesh. Yeah, like. Grow a penis and then maybe I'll care. Yeah. <laughs> like, guys, 
like when guys pay attention to you, not that you would know because you're so ugly. You have to put them first. And then Althea was like, what? <laughs> I, don't you want to eat donuts with me anymore? And she's like, ew, donuts. I don't eat that anymore. I only eat cock. <laughs> <laughs> so she says that. She says that. Exactly. Exactly that. Verbatim. I was reading it from the book. Yeah. Um, She's a really weird passage. Kind of out of nowhere. <laughs> it's very Especially weird. Especially considering like. Like we said, it's such good, clean fun. It is very But then good. there's that passage where she talks about eating cock. Yeah, that's like, it's like, it's really unnerving. It's really, yeah. yeah. It's a, the room It was unnecessary. A unnecessary. Hey guys, Kelly here. Wanted to take a quick break from our show to talk to you about one of our sponsors, Stitch Fix. Look, y'all, it's the beginning of 2019 and you've got to treat yourself. Is one of your New Year's resolutions to look and feel like the hot banging mama that you all are. But at the same time, are you wanting to get some time back? So that way you can get back to writing your Twilight fanfic that you hope gets turned into its own crazy spinoff series. But at the same time, are you wanting personal styling tips so that you can feel like a fancy schmance when you have a personal stylist telling you expert advice just for you? Enter Stitch Fix an online personal styling service that finds and delivers clothes, shoes, and accessories to fit your body, budget, and lifestyle. All you have to do is go to stitchfix.com slash teen creeps. You tell them your sizes, what styles you like, and how much you want to spend on each item. You'll be paired with your very own personal stylist, Mama's Getting Fancy in 2019, baby, who's going to handpick items to send right to your door. Then you try them on, you pay only for what you love, and you return the rest. Shipping, exchanges, and returns are always free because that's the kind of lifestyle that we're living in 2019 right now. There's no subscription required. You can sign up to receive scheduled shipments, or you get your fix whenever you want. Stitch Fix's styling fee is only 20 bucks, which is applied towards anything you keep from your shipment. So get started now. Go to stitchfix.com slash teencreeps. And you'll get an extra 25% off when you keep all the items in your box. That's S-T-I-T-C-H-F-I-X dot com slash teen creeps to get started today. Stitchfix.com slash teen creeps. And now back to the show. And then so she's like so excited that she gives Jenny a hug. They like and run across the, daisy. the house from each other to like the kitchen. clasp arms. Yeah. And then... Here was and Althea's like, oh, hooray! Everything's gonna go back to the way it was. I've missed Jenny so much. Yeah. Also, okay, this was where the technicality. I was about to be like on Team Althea, where I was like, but yeah. did she turn her to the hemlo- hemlocks? I don't think so. They were just they were happened hugging. to be facing that way. Were they? Maybe they were and, facing. Well, I think it's unfair. Wouldn't he be like? Here's how it should have gone. Mm-hmm. He's like, oh, good. She chose. And Althea's like, no, 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 not her. And he goes, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that was a mistake. All right. Yeah. Well, choose somebody else. Yeah. At that it's just point. mean. Like, you're depending on her for food. Mm-hmm. Make, keep her happy. She is your yeah. source of food. Quit trying to eat her friends. Just have her bring over people she doesn't care about as much. Maybe it's like there's something with like the energy from that person where it's like, because yeah, remember maybe. later he's like, I want Becky. And she's like, no. I want Constance. Oh, I yeah. Want she's the like, one she's too you good. want the most. Maybe, or maybe that's it. Maybe Althea's feelings for them. Yeah, like, it gives them more power. Fattens them up yeah. with life force. Which would make it even cooler if she were the vampire, which she's not. Yes, it would. But I do, I did like when she was like, who was that dud of a girl that was sitting next to the fridge? I could have just picked yeah. her. <laughs> I could have picked any old girl. And it was like this. Like, I don't even know her. Poor girl that just like came to this party. <laughs> she goes home. She's like, hi, mom. Hi, dad. I'm home. How was the party? It was really fun. I made a lot of new friends. Yeah. There was this girl throwing her. Her name's Althea. Everyone loves Althea. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to go to bed. <laughs> and the whole time Althea's like, it should have been her. <laughs> She's just living this completely blameless. Yeah. Clueless life. Like, Wow. I love Althea. Well, she I'm gonna she do grew up my to be a homework. vet tech. Yeah. She's Saved a lot happy. of animal lives. Her name is Sharon. Yeah. That was Sharon. That was Sharon. So if you know Sharon and she's a vet tech, uh, that was Sharon. 
close call. Could have yeah. been vampire food. Very close. But the vampire wants more. It wants Becky. So that then it doesn't quite happen. It doesn't quite happen. Becky's like, hey, um, you should come over. And so here's the thing. I know, I know that like she had a crush on it was Ryan that ends up being there. Yeah. But part of me as a reader, I was like, oh man, I wanted them to just hang out. I didn't like want him to be there. Yeah, I assume that was the vampire running things. Like, yeah. oh, I'll send Ryan her way. So like she's busy with that. I'll leave Becky. Yeah. It's fine. <laughs> also, Becky. Well, she's like, she's like, um, okay, everything's gonna be so fun. Actually, I invited Ryan over. Um You're welcome. I'm just, like, You're welcome, girl. Get your sled on. Yeah. And then she is like, ooh, what's that in the forest? <laughs> and Althea's like, no! Like, wow, I gotta check out that moon in my garden. But then also Althea's afraid to go outside. So she's like, please, please, please come back, come back. Don't go like, in there. Oh my God, you're afraid of the dark. She's like, mm, sure. And, and she's like, yeah, yeah, that's it. She's like, please don't go in there. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. And Ryan's like, oh my God, you scared little hussy. Like, you're afraid of the dark. <laughs> but it will, what they say afterward is that Becky was doing that. We think in the moment it's because she's like lured. The vampire was luring her. Yeah, but really it's that she was trying to get them to come out so that like Ryan could show her, uh, Althea his telescope. Yeah, and that and it was like okay, make like, out in the garden. Yeah, that, that sounds fake, but it's real. Double entendre. <laughs> yeah, is is real. He like literally wants to show her yeah. his telescope. Uh, and so and then she was going to go back inside, but instead Althea thinks that the vampire is there. Yeah. Yeah. So that that makes it the second time she's had a fit trying to save somebody from the vampire. There are a couple times where she like has a fit trying to save someone from full fit, fit. Like, full on fit and her friends are like, "Oh, like okay, but then the vampire makes them forget it." Yeah. So that her popularity remains intact. Yeah, cuz they are just like usually like silent for a full minute after yeah. she has a fit. And then and the then vampire just makes accept whatever she says. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, she gets saved. Oh, yeah. She thinks that somehow she's defeated the vampire, has like a blissful vampire free week. Yeah. And then he's like, just kidding, I'm back. And she's like, no, you can take my popularity away from me. Now I know I don't need you. She thinks she's like set. So he takes it away and he's like, good luck, bitch. And it sucks. And he like, he not only takes it away, he like makes it so people are rude to her now. People are so mean to her. She's like got bad luck. She like falls in a puddle or something. Yeah, no, she yeah, her car, her won't car start won't and start. she literally she falls like, in an ice truly puddle. Falls in a puddle. <laughs> she gets to school. No one remotely knows her name. Yeah. And like she she's like, Ryan, oh my God, I'm so glad to see you. I like had a terrible morning. And he's like, ew. Like I don't know you and I don't care. And she's like what and then she tries she's to like, talk to becky. becky she's like becky and becky's like oh my god get away from me yeah so it's definitely not like he just took it away because we saw them be perfectly normal and polite to her he, he did something like, else he made it so that she is not just invisible she's unpopular yeah 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 the so that she's like just kidding just kidding please 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 yeah and then he's like, all right. Like, okay, but you have to bring me Constance. And she's like, mm, uh, sure. <laughs> she, I know. That. She really waffles on that. She's like, she decides she's going to try and do it. And she's like, why don't we all like hang out and go to my house in the car? <laughs> and then uh, everyone's like, okay. And Celeste well, is everyone like. Everyone is like. I'm sorry, not Celeste. More than okay. Yeah, they're like, great. They're like, great. Because like, <laughs> weirdly, I have like an insatiable need to see your cupola also like constance is like "Ooh, the hemlocks are creeping me out like she does get a vibe but she's like no i need to like go she's through like, with it but i want to see them i want to see that i want to see the cupola and then at the last minute <laughs> she has a fit in the car this is her third fit and they're like ah and she's like let me out let me out of the car let me out and then so they let her out and, and um it like turns Ryan against her. He's like, fine, if you're going to be such a like weird bitch, I'm going to like kick you out of the car. Which again, I think is not a genuine reaction. I think that's vampire. So then she gets kicked out and then she's like doing the thing where she's like struggling through like molasses trying to close these. Yeah. And he's like taking away popularity again. So then, okay, here's the question. Yes. 
let's talk about the dance scene because I do have questions. One from earlier. Yeah. The when Ryan's dancing. Yeah. So how does how does mm-hmm. that make the vampire go away? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> So he shows up in his car and she's like, play that rock and roll music that hurts my ears. As loud as possible and dance. So then he does it. And somehow that lets her out. Yeah. She's like, oh, and then I realized the door was always open and I was able to get out of the tower. And I have no idea what that had to do with anything. No, I don't think there was anything. But it is definitely implied that that frees her somehow. The joy of dance. Keeps yeah. the vampire away. I don't know. Like, he does say when she's getting ready for the party that he doesn't like loud music, but I don't... Oh, yeah. I don't know why they're dancing. <laughs> he didn't have to dance. He didn't have to dance. And I don't know why... Like, it's, like it said, oh, she almost realized something. And I'm like, okay, what did she almost realize? I mean, I know what she means it to be at the end, but I don't know what in that moment is close to the realization that she comes to. Yeah. Because, like, I guess the thing that, like, big picture, yeah, she's like, supposed to realize forward. is is that she she defeats him in the end by, oh, yeah. <laughs> it, this is also, like, like, a weird, like, okay, this is kind of a technicality in getting away with this because she's like, oh, okay, like, you can have me, but... You know, just one last time. Can I, can I just feel what it's like to be popular again? I just want to feel it. And it's like, and he laid the popularity over her like a dress. Yeah. And she once again, like, felt the warmth and magic or whatever of yeah. the popularity. And then she goes, I don't want it. He's like, what? What? <laughs> you can take your stinky popularity and shove it. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't want your gift. So, and in rejecting it, then he weakens and she's able to leave. Yeah. And it's not just that. So she goes back to being regular Althea, but she's not like reviled. Mm -hmm. But she's also like, nobody remembers her. And she's like, I'll make friends the old fashioned way. It's like, yeah, welcome to the beginning of the book, Althea. Also, she's like, she's like, um, I'll get on the cheerleading squad and I'll be the most popular girl in school and I'll deserve it. And I was like, you think those other people deserve to be popular? Like it it was so like, yeah, it was like, it was just so like, you're still not naive. getting the big picture. Yeah. Which yeah. is that like, just make friends. I mean, she does, she does realize she's like, yes, it was stupid. I just need to go about, making friends like everybody does, which is like to be nice and caring and Mm. friendly. And so it is, it's like she grows in that, like she was feeling super sorry for herself at the beginning of the book. She She was like, she wasn't trying to make friends. She just wanted it to happen magically. And she was like, like, um, you know, to Celeste, for example, she She was like, she doesn't deserve it. And it's like, well, she like tried out and she made it on the team. So she does deserve it. Well, and where she went wrong is, yes, where she went wrong is like Celeste was starting to become her friend. I know. So she had an end. Just keep going with being friends with Celeste. Yeah. Instead of like trading Celeste for magic. Yeah. Um. However, ultimately, even though it's like, great, Althea, I'm so happy you've had this realization. Congrats. Um, you still like ruin Celeste and Jenny's life. So are they still like I think sucked they're up? Still sucked up. Here's what well, I thought. Maybe not. Maybe not because he like not. Dis- dissolves or whatever. Yeah, because he gets weakened. And if nobody's gonna remember, give me your book. Give me your book. Give me that book. Okay. While you're looking for that, uh huh. Can I tell you what I hoped would happen but didn't happen? So she's like wandering around the cafeteria and she sees like the sleepy rejects table, which is like all the people she gave <laughs> to the so sad. And they're just like sitting there eating. I thought she was like, gonna like become the queen of the rejects. Like I thought, I thought she, she was, was gonna, gonna sit with them. She doesn't she does not. No. She's just like, Oh, that's sad. I did that. Oh well. Yeah. She's like, mm, anyway, I have to get somewhere. Yeah, she's like, I have to get popular. Oh gosh, I'm so busy. 
Um, I have to run a whole giant house by myself. As you see, I have no parents. So, yeah. As you see, I'm just a Victorian orphan. Mm-hmm. Um, da, 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 da. Yeah. Resolve warmer, hotter, sterner than popularity filled her heart and mind and soul. I reject your gift, said Althea softly. I'm getting rid of it. You can't do that, said the vampire. Althea smiled. The smile inched down her body, giving strength first to her face, then to her shoulders, her heart, her arms. The vampire's teeth went back into his mouth. He looked alarmed. That's your source of power, isn't it? She cried. When weak people take what you offer, you become strong. You would have had no power if I had the courage to ignore you. Strength from understanding crept down into her legs. Althea kicked his black cape away and stomped on it. She began laughing. The vampire took a step backward into the tower room. I won't let you do it to others. Blee, 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 blee. She, she cries, you are nothing and I am a match for you. And he goes back in the room. <laughs> here's, so here's a part where I was like, what? <laughs> um, so she leapt forward. The vampire hunched over into a ball like a porcupine hiding its soft underbelly. Althea grabbed him. She took her popularity and pushed it against him, shoved it on him, wiped it on his face and his clothes. She mopped him with it. That I was like, huh? I don't know how that I happens. Guess just, it's, it's I just, just there, she said, it's yours again. I just pictured her like rubbing her torso on his face. Yeah. Just being like, or, yeah, you or, take like, this. Just taking her hands and like just yeah, like smearing. rubbing them in his face. Um Did you hear about this that during I think it was uh, maybe a screen test. I'm not sure. Lady Gaga was wearing like natural stage makeup and Bradley Cooper wiped it off her face. I. What would you do if somebody wiped your face? Yeah, I did hear about that. (laughs) And I had the reaction that you had, which was, look, I know it makes a cute anecdote, but go fuck yourself. Yeah, like... no. Don't touch my face. Don't fucking, Don't touch, fucking my face. touch my face. It's if you want to have a conversation with me yeah. and suggest that I go in with no makeup on, yeah. great. Yeah, sure. Stay away from my face. Don't fucking touch my face. Here's an, it's similar to the other anecdote that um Amber Heard shared about uh Momoa, Jason Momoa on the set of Aquaman. So she had um she's a bookworm and so they had a lot of downtime on set. And she always had to be sitting in this like little harness thing. And um, the set guys like made a little pocket for her to keep her book in so she could read all the time. And Jason Momoa was bored. And so he was like, pay attention to me, pay attention to no. me. And she's no, like, not a book. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Not. And not to a reader. Yeah. And then she she was like, I'm reading. And then he ripped out the rest of the pages of her book and was like, now you have to pay attention to me. And she shared that story that as if it was cute. a cute story. And I was like. Oh my god! Or I maybe she's being like smart. She's trying to blow up his spot. Mind. She's like, "Oh, this was really cute that he did this." Dot dot dot. <laughs> and then like, I'll let the public and then, decide. Like, enjoy tearing him up. Yeah, but like, that is in. Oh my god! If somebody took a book of mine, you do not touch my fucking books. Don't do that shit. You may as well take my phone and throw it in the water. Yeah. Like, are you fucking kidding me? You're gonna disrespect my book that much? I know. And also, like, that's my property. Like, don't destroy my shit. I'm like, I will choose how to spend my time on set. Thank you. Here's okay. Here's a caveat. And I proposed this on an episode of Same Day Shipping is the only way that this is okay. So he rips out the pages, right? Mm -hmm. And then he like reaches into his coat and it was all a magic trick. And he gives you (laughs) your book. And then he's like, okay, do you want to talk? I do close up magic. (laughs) I'm Jason Momoa. (laughs) Jason Momoa. Close up magician. (laughs) But yeah that is the only thing the only way that it's been like, okay. it is a weird magic trick that he does or he like he takes her book and he rips up all the pages mm-hmm. and then he brings a book out and he's like i'm just playing i have the same book here you can have mine okay yes and then she's like my dad gave me that book and he signed it in the back happy birthday amber and he's dead now and then he goes Check the back of your book. <laughs> and then again, <laughs> it was close up magic. <laughs> it always comes back to magic. I think the only way it can be okay that is would be if, if it's somehow so involved. fucking funny. It would be so that funny. That would be so funny. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> she think my dad signed that. Check and the back of your book. Check the back of the book. <laughs> oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh my 
god, it's crazy. Look familiar. Why <laughs> <laughs> did you do that? <laughs> <laughs> I I feel like we like it's weird to hear two of those stories in a row where someone's like this, isn't this a cute thing that someone did and you're like no this is horrible yeah this is a bad story like this yeah. person's not a good person yeah it's crazy I mean I know that like it's really frightening when you hear somebody tell a story where you are like oh that's like um the worst thing I can imagine <laughs> yeah but they're like trying to say I mean it's as far as thing. like casual interactions yeah go, like oh, uh, actually, they were being really insulting and um, that cute nickname you thought was cute was actually a racial slur. But Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's usually... It is like, usually... I don't want to steal your joy from you, but that's a horrifying story. Like, and then what do you do? Like, I feel like there was... Okay, I'm going to tell you a story right now. There was a man and I... My mom invited a bunch of people over from her, like, that were also teachers. This is not a funny story. So you're going to be enraged. I, I was very enraged when this story happened. I'm prepared. Okay. So it was like, my mom's like, I'm having some people over that I used to teach with. Here's the thing. My mom, like, does not know how to interact with people. So she doesn't know when someone is being like, like, she lets she, so much fly. But also at the same time, recognize. Not. Yeah. Yeah. So she's like, oh, well, he's just funny or he's like, oh, just no. whatever. Right. So this guy um, is having dinner at her house and I already like didn't like him because of some things he said. Mm -hmm. And then he starts telling this story about how he and his friend, um, who when they were like in the Marines or something, like met these dogs. Oh, so no. I guess like warning like animal death i might have shared this story i think maybe you did but i cannot remember i think eagle eared listeners will probably recognize this story uh -huh. and he's like um and like i didn't like that they were in the house so we just like locked all the doors and killed the dogs and he's laughing and i was like i'm sorry locked all the doors and killed and like the beat dogs. the shit out of the dogs and like wouldn't what? let them leave yeah and killed them what? yeah and what? I was like, and and like he was laughing, and everyone else was like really uncomfortable. Wait, but no one he said anything. Beat them to death. Yes, yes. Oh, I know. Oh boy. So then I, I don't, I don't know that you did, or maybe my brain very kindly cut it out. Yeah, that's makes me want to vomit. Here's the thing: he claims it's not true and that it was just a joke. But I was oh, like, I do remember it now because yeah. I remember you saying that. Because why would you make that joke? Yeah, and I was like, but that's not a joke. That's not a joke. That's just a lie. That's weird. I just or you did I, do that. Like, okay, it makes sense if it's a lie now, and he thinks he's funny. Yeah, I should fucking hope it's a lie. Because if not, but also there's something wrong. Like he needs to, and also this guy's a teacher. He works with children. You're, you're a murderer. Yeah. I don't you, care if it's a dog. You're yeah, a murderer. No, you should not like her harm a creature that like has it has no defense against you. Like it like why are you bragging about this story? So he's telling the story. Everyone's like very uncomfortable. I am like like I am so fucking pissed off. And I was just like like I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? And he was like, oh, yeah, I'm just like joking around. And I was like, well, it's not a joke. Like what part of it is a joke? That's not funny. And he's like, well, it didn't happen. And I was like, well, then it's a lie. And then he was like pissed. You know what this reminds me of? Keep going. I'll say okay. it after. So then he's just like pissed and he's like, okay, I take it back. I take it back. I was like, you can't unring a bell. You can't undrop a bomb. You just said that. Everybody here has to sit here with the fact that you said that. You just want to be clear that you think it's funny. Yeah. To the idea of beating a dog to death. Yeah. I was like, that's disgusting. And then he was just like, okay, I guess some people are sensitive. And I was just like, no, I just don't ever want to talk to you again. And I don't ever want to see you in this house again. And then I got up and left the dinner. And then um, afterwards, my mom... I, I was like I, I left and like didn't whatever like deal with it and then my mom after the dinner was acting like everything was fine and I was like hello you cannot have this man in your home anymore there's something wrong with this guy and she's like oh well he's just kind of funny and I was like no he's not that's not funny that's not funny that's horrifying that's horrible I do remember you telling this now just because you followed it up with the, I was, it was a joke. That he was claiming it was a joke. That he was claiming it was a joke. But still, even though I had heard it before, I couldn't remember it. And I, I felt sick. Yeah, no, it's I sickening. I felt sick hearing it's that. It's sickening. What a monster. 
And I think he's still a teacher. I'll blow up his spot. He teaches at West High School. What's in his name? Torrance. I don't remember. Damn it. I, I think he teaches some kind of math. Well, everybody go investigate. Yeah. I just like, I that's cannot have, horrifying. like, that's like awful. This guy should not be around children. That's not funny. Yeah. Ugh. So what that made me think of is very first episode, Christopher Pike, um, not weekend, slumber, slumber party. party. Um, when Cal is joking about dropping napalm. napalm yes. On German soldiers. Yes. Which I'm I remember. It's like so funny. The first question we had was like the timing of that. Yeah. For, <laughs> it was like, you don't, you didn't drop napalm. Like if you did, then you were not involved in whatever war was yeah, happening. You with were them. in like a covert. <laughs> you like, were you like in Blackwater? Op in fucking Latin America. Um, but second of all, no, yeah, that's not a joke. Yeah, that's not you saying a horrifying thing that didn't happen is not like funny. I feel <laughs> like how is that funny? I feel like there's a lot of people that are just like, you know, I just I'm just like an edgy individual. Yeah, I'm just outrageous. Okay, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Tight. Tight, tight, tight. You're so edgy. I feel like if somebody describes themselves as edgy, like I know, I'm like, I can't be friends with you, dude. Like you're no so No actual edgy person would describe no. themselves as edgy. No, no. Ugh. Like that's like an, like I feel like an a person that's like, I'm just like really edgy is like an NYU film bro that like, like just like photographs a lot of nude models. And loves Todd Solons. Who's Todd Solons? He did all those horrifying movies like happiness and okay, i'm gonna look him up i think he did this is welcome t-o-d-d to doll, welcome to the dollhouse but he that one's not that bad oh solons i see yeah Solund. oh is, his photo he's like i'm fucked up i think that's who that is let's see i think dark thought provoking right. socially conscious satire examination of the dark underbelly of, of middle crap middle class american suburbia welcome to the dollhouse happiness storytelling palindromes life during wartime dark horse and wiener dog oh wiener dog is 2016 should we go see it not on your life happiness is so fucked up really yes i'm gonna click on happiness 1998 palindrome and happiness are the are the two i've seen that are just like insanely fucked up oh like, philip seymour hoffman isn't it yeah it's Let's really see. plot, really awful. Okay, so Trish, she's uh, the oldest sister. She's a middle, upper middle class housewife. She's married to Bill. She's got three kids. She appears at the perfect marriage. She doesn't know. Oh no! About Bill's secret life. Bill is a pedophile. Mm hmm. No! <gasps> He's obsessed with their, the 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 classmate of their son. Yep. No! Oh my god. Ugh. Oh, yeah. Uh, by the way, don't anybody else read this on Wikipedia because it is a trigger. This is so... It's disgusting. Disgusting. Todd Solons, you you're, think you're yeah, so it's fucking... Really, yeah, exactly. Tight. <laughs> you think you're so... You think you're so cool <laughs> with your pedophile movie and your molestation i'm sorry i just read a line from it that is so gross it like i truly felt sick seeing it his I son i saw it in the theater his son says oh you saw it in the theater yeah. <laughs> oh my god Lindsay. Yeah. <laughs> i was working at a an independent uh movie theater at the time that showed a lot of like indie movies oh, what is the movie where like it has the most disgusting scene in history it involves a baby what is that movie Fuck, I don't know. A uh, friend of the show, Ryan Mogi, was at South by Southwest where it premiered, and she didn't know what she was going to be getting into, and saw it, and was like, "Oh, recent." Um, okay. I I'm gonna listeners are probably like screaming at us right now. They're like, "It's blah blah blah." <laughs> so you know what? Stop screaming in your car. Jesus um, Christ! Already. Okay. Uh, what was that line? Oh, it's when the son says, "Because the son's like 11 or whatever," and uh -huh. he says to his dad, "Would you ever fuck me?" And then his dad says, "No, I would jerk off instead." <laughs> yeah that was that was the line i yeah. remembered fuck that was the line that's the worst line oh and a serbian film i, I want to say that, i didn't even like, have to look it up i re remember that sounds vaguely familiar is what i'm trying to say i will say of that line like philip seymour hoffman is not saying it flippantly he's like sobbing he's crying yeah yeah no he feels no it's like one bad. of the saddest 
characters, saddest movies. Like, he doesn't want to be that way. It's so horrifying. Here's the thing. I don't think any pedophiles want to be that way, right? No. Because, like, that one guy, remember him from Glee? Oh, yeah. He killed himself from shame because um, he got yeah. outed as being child a pedophile. Porn. Huh? Was it their child porn? or Yeah, yeah. kitty porn. Okay, this is uh, a Serbian film. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, trigger Here's the warning thing, guys. for the listeners. Yeah, perhaps. like just don't. There is an extended scene. I guess skip forward like three times duh, 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 if you don't want to hear this. There is an extended scene where he, where a man fucks a baby. Don't do that. <sighs> With movies like this. Don't do it. No one, you're not saying anything important yeah, by doing that. I don't want to sound like you're like, like, you know, someone's like uncle at Thanksgiving, but like. Just ha- like, just have some like decency. I guess yeah. like, well, like you can say you can get across whatever message, say whatever you want to say, make whatever like social statement or critique yeah. you want to make without having to do that. Yeah, I, yeah. Like the people who are like, but then you really get the visceral. It's like no, you are in a way glamorizing this for entertainment. Mm-hmm. Um. I was watching. Well, you're exploiting it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah, it's gross. I don't like it. And here's I the thing: don't need it. I and here's the thing: I, I reject wa- it. I watch a lot of shit that's fucked up. I and I enjoy a lot of fucked up things, and I love horror, and I love all of that. But like, there, I mean, there are lines. There's a line. There is a line that I'm just like, I'm not interested. I don't need to partake in that. I don't need to see the a it's Serbian like, film. I can't. I can't happiness. really put my finger on why rape is worse than murder. <laughs> like to watch. Yeah. Like why I'm okay with something slashery. Mm-hmm. But I'm not like, yeah, I'm fine watching a rape because it's not real. I can't. I yeah, can't. I don't enjoy that. I don't want to. I think it's because it's like we we're talking about like like there's like gender politics. And there it, it and it, it signifies also kind of a a very extreme visualization of like su- a person being completely i don't know i don't it's know like, what the difference it's like is watching so- someone get hollowed out yeah we're just like watching well here's this th- another thing too i don't like torture living porn. death i don't watch like yeah. hostel or that shit so it's like yeah similar it's for that. me yeah it's that whereas like slasher films I'm okay with or like even like very gory things Mm -hmm. I'm fine but like on Outlander the Jamie rape Mm -hmm. gets shown quite a bit Mm -hmm. or yeah yeah I think so um but and I I sort of kept watching like I didn't watch any of season three and like half of season two because after Frank died I didn't give a shit Mm -hmm. Um, because the actor who played Frank Mm -hmm. and Jack Randall were, he was really good. Um, and I was like, these other people are boring, but I jumped back in because now their daughter, Brianna went back in time. Oh, I was was seeing previews about that. I want to see what this, yeah, (laughs) this is interesting again, even though she's boring too. Sorry, everyone. Um, but she, she gets raped like so quickly. So quickly within getting to that time. Like she really she appears in Scotland fucking leery. Like she runs into her and she's crazy still. Yeah. Um and wait, Leary and she, is Leary's the 16 year old girl who was in love with Jamie and oh, tried to get yep. Claire yep, 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 as a yep, witch. Yep, 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 yep. Um he ended up there's so many spoilers. Sorry guys. He ended up um marrying Leary because she was widowed and he wanted to help take care of her daughters who is he oh sorry jamie really like fucking 20 years go by what 20 years go by in the books and show so like in she both goes timelines back, i guess she goes yeah back as a 40 something year old woman oh um so oh yeah and i saw the pictures they do the classic like she looks the same but has like a gray streak it's so i was thinking about this earlier because i watched last night's episode today it is so funny that there are still just all these beautiful people around mm-hmm. <laughs> these gorgeous young people yeah. with like some gray yeah <laughs> it's just like a little song it's pepper. really funny um 
But I was very happy with how they handled it because it's like the the um, confrontation starts to happen between her and the character who rapes her. And, and there's a fight and she's trying to get away. But then it cuts outside and you're just watching his... Like he uh, is like the captain of a ship, and so yeah. you're just watching his crew sit there and do nothing. Yeah, while you can like sort of hear muffled struggle. Yeah, and her cries for help, which is like still upsetting, but they're not showing it in a porn way. I'm trying to see. I think so that's like the, thing. the best the way to handle lens. it. So it's like it's still in the story, but they're not showing you unnecessarily. It's just. It reminds me of this thing of like, um, and I hate to say it, but it, a lot of times it's when it's like a male director or a male creator yeah. who's like, the only way a woman can be strong is to survive a rape. Yeah. And it's like, well. Or that's really not true at all. Yeah. But I've also seen like revenge movies mm -hmm. of like a woman going out to kill her like attackers mm -hmm. that... um feel different and so i'm just like what is the i think it does it's it's like who is this story about is yeah it, what story are you telling, yeah and what story really? are you telling is it that this person is strong only because of this thing that happened to her because that's not tight well it's it's also interesting because there are it's it's that thing where the a man or a superhero or something the, the woman's like she's fridge or or rape yeah girlfriend in the fridge thing um that's what like sends them on their journey I to hero i fucking hate that shit hood. i hate the and whole and it's like it's it's the same for a woman even and it's her but it's yeah. like her being shoved into a fridge yeah yeah i think yeah i, I there's so something like, there about... are other ways yeah. just cuz it's a woman who like who it's the catalyst for mm -hmm. doesn't make it okay. I know. And I think also, and then there's kind of the question, right? Of like, but there are people who experience like a rape or sexual assault who are changed because of it. And then how do you like, it's weird because of course these stories exist. So yeah. isn't it okay to tell them? And I think it just depends on how you tell them. It does depend on how you tell it. Cause I think if you, if you tell it in a very Hollywood flashy, like wow way or just a very exploitive way and it's one of those things where it's like i can't tell you exactly what about a scene makes it seem exploitive but i can tell you if it is exploitive or not it's like are you showing it like it's a sex scene yeah yeah you don't have to show it yeah um what else was i gonna say about that oh also in brianna's storyline like it's it's not really like something it's not done in such a cliche way of like, oh, and that's the thing that she had to go through to yeah. become yeah. stronger. Like yeah. instead, she just like has to deal with the fact that like now she's pregnant and she doesn't know if it's her rapists or her boyfriends. Yeah, and all these other things get thrown into place. So it's just the story continues as opposed to like that's what made her her strongest. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, I think it is it's like rape doesn't give you magic powers. I think it just depends on if it's well done or not. That's just what it comes Absolutely. down to. Yeah. Just well done or not. Yeah. And if it's not well done, it's usually tacky and exploitive and like just like weird and Here's and what Outlander has told me. Yeah. Has taught me. Do not go back in time. Don't do that. It shit. was terrible. Nah, dude. It was terrible. Here's the thing. You will get raped or murdered or bad things happen all the time to everybody. Yeah. And also like that's what Outlanders taught me. A thing that Outlander taught me by, I guess, proxy, because it didn't go out. It taught me. It didn't mean to t teach me this, mm -hmm. but it was something that I kept thinking about. Mm -hmm. Back then it was nasty, too. Yeah. Like. People were not brushing their teeth. They were not cleaning their asses. I always think of that while yep. I'm watching these shows. I'm like, everybody smells. And everybody and smells. It smells very bad. Very and they bad. all, like, you can die of a toothache. Like, that's fucked up. Yeah. And then also, I mean, we talked, we, we, if you guys want to hear more, because we did Outlander for Outside, Outside Genre, Genre, right? If you want to hear more about that, you can listen to our Outside Genre episode available on Patreon, patreon.com slash teen creeps. But I will do this teaser where like one of the things that you and I were losing our minds over was a time that Jamie tries to go down on her after they've been riding horses all day. 
and she puts a stop to it and is correct too. Yeah, because it's because he and I were both like, no, wait, no, no, no. But remember, he wins her over by like doing what horses do, which is to like deep inhale. So oh, he like yeah. huffs her like and he's like, no, it's great. It's like, no. And she's like, OK. And I'm like, girl, no, like go like wash yourself. I mean, I guess it like I have it has to be that like everything reaches some sort of like pH balance, though. It has to be. And it has to plateau. Right. Yeah, and it everybody smells that way. But here's the thing. Uh, I will say like, that is like, Claire just walking around going. Wow, I re- I remember living in a place that didn't smell like this. Yeah, I think I I think it was very disgusting though. I do think that it is it was disgusting. Maybe not like the the like Scottish Moors, but certainly certain times like uh, Whitechapel during the times of um, what's it called? Uh, the guy that cut throats. Who's that guy? Jack the Ripper. Oh yeah, where it was like London was in a bad place. Like yeah. there was literally Death and poo-poo in the streets everywhere. Yeah. Like that, like the dirtiness is unlike, we can't even imagine it. No. I, I do worry though. I do worry for her bits <laughs> when she's in the back, back then times. I'm just like, yeah. I, I couldn't, Yeesh. I couldn't like every time we stopped at a stream, I'd be like, I'm just going to like do something over here really quick. Like no one worry about yeah, what I'm, I'm doing, fine. but like I have well, to, Here's something I hadn't even thought of till you said I'm worried about her bits just now is she goes back there and she keeps like flaunting the fact that she's vaccinated. Oh, yeah. I think she's like a small smallpox will not affect me. Influenza or whatever. Yeah. Um, But there had to be like it's not like the strains were exactly the same. Also, there had to have been things that actually would have hurt you more than them. I do wonder, like, when people brought things over f- to America, it killed Native Americans. Well, I do wonder if, because she's, like, from that area, like, just in her genes, she's she's immune. What I was worried about, though, is she's like, I'm, you know, I'm vaccinated, blah, blah, blah. My worry was, like, girl, but you could be carrying something that could wipe out this, yeah, like, that oh. fucking missionary. Listen, I'm glad that missionary died. Huh? So there is a missionary. I'm sure you heard about this. Nope. Everyone was like, don't go to this Senghalese island. You don't know about this? No. Oh, my God, girl. I have to tell you. Okay. <laughs> so he's like, here's the thing. My whole stance on religion, right, is be whatever religion you want, but don't make other people be it if they don't want to. Yeah. Okay. It's a good policy. So this guy. Yeah. John Chow, I believe. Okay. He's a Christian missionary. And he's from America. Mm-hmm. And he decides to go to, I believe it was a Senghalese island. Um, yep. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm not sure if it was a Senghalese I- island, but it was called North Sentinel Island. And this is an island off of the, uh, in by India mm-hmm. that is inhabited by uh, the most, like one of the most preserved like ancient peoples. Remote. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They are not, Anyone that tries to approach them, they have shot down with arrows. And there's a very famous photo of like every once in a while, the Indian government will just like send a chopper over to like look at them to see like, hey, are they okay? And there's a famous <laughs> photo of are like, you guys okay? Yeah, we're fine. Of a native like aiming an arrow at like the photographer. <laughs> um, so they are just like very like aggressive. Leave us alone. Yeah. So it is against Indian law to set foot on this island for many reasons. One, you will die because they will shoot you. Mm -hmm. Two, they are, they have almost no immunities to modern uh, day uh, diseases. So they could just die from merely a contact. Um, So John Chow heard about this, these people in high school. And he's like, and he's like, oh my God, I'm going to bring Jesus. Yes. He was like, I can't wait. This is my dream to bring Jesus to these people. So. It's illegal to go to the island. So he has to bribe these fishermen to get him to take him to this island. They, they're like, we're not going to the fucking island. We're going to drop you off on this little like sloop and you can get yourself to the island. So he starts to do that. He's like approaching. The, a, a child comes to the shore. Oh, no. And he's like holding up. Like he's like throwing like fish 
he like throws fish towards them and then he holds up a Bible and he's like, I'm bringing you the word of Jesus. They shot at the Bible and he's like, whoop. And he turns around, goes back to the fishermen and they're like, we're not going to bring you back again. And he's like, let me just try one more time. So they're like, fine, but like, you're going to die. And he's like, Jesus will protect me. So he goes again and then instantly is shot down by like 30 arrows, dies. And then now his body is like a danger of like infecting these people who I think there's only. They just like kick sand on him or. Well, they don't know. They don't know that he can make them sick. So like they have no reason to know. Right. So Lindsay. So like they I don't know what they're doing with his body. Like authorities cannot get close enough to check without putting the people in danger. So what a horrible little shit. Yeah, he Rest he was peace. part of a community of people who do extreme, sometimes undercover missionary work. <sighs> so stupid. So I'm anyway, so I was like, I'm glad that dude died. The hubris. And like the entire evangelical community is like, this man is an idiot. <laughs> like his Good. church is trying to like martyr him. And like even like pretty gung ho evangelical people are like, no, nah, you don't. Like, these people don't want your help. Like, don't force and like, yourself onto this island. God isn't going to be cool with you, like, bringing your disease to them. Yeah. Like, the, I, I will say, I'm not glad he died. I'm not glad he died. But fuck that guy. Oh, and then now I'm reading an article that's like... When did this happen? Uh, pretty recently, this year. Mm. And I'm reading now there's like... uh um they interviewed this woman who like used to be kind of like as not militant, but like, you know, um, gung ho as him. Uh-huh. And she's like, I was once like John Allen Chow. I was raised to believe that with everyone you meet, there's an opportunity to save them. Um, and they call it the 1040 window, which is a group of like, or it's like an area. Let me see here. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just got distracted. Uh, it's a, I'm, there's a, <laughs> there's a website for his church. Oh no. It's called All Nations. And it's an organization that trains missionaries to travel to remote locations. Now, if you guys want to hear more details about this, I would suggest uh, listening to, uh, last podcast on the left does a side stories about this. And they talk uh, about like the, um, what All Nations does and how racist and embarrassing it is to train you to be able to change a culture. Yeah. Basically to erase a culture. Mm -hmm. So they like put you in the woods and then they dress up in what they think is native garb and speak a nonsense language at you. And you have to try and like get the word of Jesus to them. That makes no sense. It's so embarrassing. You can't replicate that situation. (laughs) No, because then you're just in the woods of Missouri. Because then what's the training? LARPing? Yeah, it's LARPing. Like that's like saying you, D&D is training. It is LARPing if you yes, it's D&D if you only play as a um uh fuck, what's the one that is like super religious? Uh 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 It's a type of usually a type of paladin, I think. Isn't it? Monk. <laughs> Monk? Monk. Um that would be like if suddenly I refused to speak English to you right now. And you're and I was like, "Now try to convince me." Um, to worship cheese. Oh, you know what? It is monk. You're right. It is monk. But monks are more like magic-y. And then I think, yeah. Oh, cleric. Uh, cleric. Yes. Cleric. Cleric. My nerd cred just flew out the window. <laughs> um, But yeah, no. Yeah, it would be like if you were like just speaking gibberish to me. And then and- by the end of the night, I was like, this was lesson one. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like... I can say with any like definite authority that like I am. Su- What's the barometer of how successful exactly. you are? Exactly, there's not I like a English. curriculum. It's exactly <laughs> like, you have to understand what I'm saying. Like I can turn a switch in my head and stop understanding oh. English. It was it. It would be like or if like I, it, any of Western culture. Like what? It's so embarrassing. That's an insane. Thought. It's insane. It's insane. That's sad. But so their their like thing though is um I was the thing I was laughing about was uh their like phrasing on their website is pack your bags, come to CPX and get your world rocked by Jesus. Oh no. No. 
Oh, here we go. At one point during a training, he was blindfolded and taken to a remote location where a group of people pretended to be hostile villages armed with spears. Well, he sure experienced that. He did, actually. What a fucking... That man's blood is on all of their hands. What a horrifying thing yeah. to, like, brainwash people into doing. Yeah. And then put a whole fucking culture at risk. That's mm-hmm. terrible. It's like the hubris Jesus involved. Christ. <laughs> Truly. Mm, I don't think he approves. I don't think he approves. Yeah, it's it, it, it. But that whole story, I was like obsessed with that story when it came out. He like he gets to heaven and Jesus is is waiting at the gates. He's like, hi, I actually don't meet everyone at the gates. Um, You're not allowed in. Yeah, I, I came here for this. Hi. No, absolutely here, not. You need to have a seat, son. Mm hmm. We need to talk. But then, and then like, he like turns his chair around backwards oh, nice. and like straddles he's it. And he's, he's wearing like, Birkenstocks. Hey, let's wrap. And then John Chow gets sent down to hell, right? Yeah. And the devil's like, we're too tight to have you here. Like, this is like a cool place. He's like, where am I supposed to, to go? Here. And he's like, oh, there's this like church called 1040. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, no. He's like, I go back. And then he opens his eyes and he's the trainer. Oh, fuck. And then Jason Momoa is like, is this your card? <laughs> <laughs> and then he wipes all the makeup off your goes, face. <laughs> and he's Lady Gaga. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, well, I think we covered the book. Yeah. So that's the cheerleader. That's the cheerleader. I liked I it. Forget, where did we? We Yeah, we just left off. That she defeats oh. him. And she well, moves. Just, yeah. So the very last moment of it is... um this sort of like little shop of horrors ending where it's like, sure, she left, but like, he's still there in a Mm -hmm. little plant. Um, So I'll just read the end. Acolyte. That was the word I was looking for. I'm sorry. Oh, acolyte. Yes. Okay. That is a word that makes sense. Yes. Um, So she says, or it says, I have stopped him, thought thought Althea, but what matters more? I stopped myself. True. 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 She walked down the stairs, walked out of the house, walked into the yard in the sleet and the ugly dark. There were no threats. There was only weather and winter. I have no friends. I will have to make friends the way other people do, one at a time, by being nice. I'm not a cheerleader. I will have to get on the squad the way other girls do, by practicing hard. Someday I will have it back, but I will have earned it. It will be mine, and I will never have to give it away. I will deserve it. The house is still there. Although Althea moved away. See? The where hemlocks, are the parents? Where are the fucking parents? Where are the fucking parents? Where are her parents? You know what? That's the question always. Where are the parents? They're on North Where's Sentinel John Child's Island. Parents? John Child's parents? Yeah. Mm-hmm. The hemlocks are taller, thicker, and darker. When night falls, cars do not drive by and strangers keep their distance. Two winters have damaged the tower. One of the shutters has come loose. It's banging against the tower as if something inside hopes to get out. The house is for sale. It will appeal to somebody with children. Somebody who needs plenty of space. One of the children might become curious about the tower, play with the shutters, and find a vampire. A vampire who needs a victim. A vampire who is used to waiting and winning. That's the end of the book. I think it's a good end. That's a good end. Um, It is very like, oh, or is it? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Dot, dot, (laughs) dot. Just waiting and used Mm -hmm. to winning. (laughs) Yeah. But I liked this book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Me too. Caroline B. Cooney's. Uh, she's a winner. She's a good author. Much like a vampire. <laughs> she's used to winning. <laughs> um, I suggest that book. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. We really appreciate it. Yeah. And leave some more reviews. I actually, oh no, I have them. Okay, we'll do it next week. I saw that a lot of you, there are a lot of new reviews uh, for ha- pocket, ha- I forgot, table, for- uh, pocket jalapeno dip. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh no, they're on my computer, which is right here in front of me. Oh, Okay, okay, okay. So, <gasps> oh my god, do you know what we should do after this? What? Listen to some voicemails. Can we? With the setup we have right now? Oh my god, you know what we you should, should do, do next week? week? <laughs> Listen, to, Listen some to some voicemails. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Big apology for the, how long we've gone not listening to voicemails. I can lay the blame firmly at the feet of public domain theater. Yeah. We simply have not had the time trying to record both podcasts yeah um but as you may know we decided to end public domain theater um next week will be our first week um not recording it and we were sad to see it go we hope that 
some public domain theater listeners have crossed have crossed over to the other side yeah and are listening to us now if you are uh, thank you very much and now we can get back to um going on more tangents such as talking about todd solon's and uh misguided missionary <laughs> um those two are like such opposite ends of the I spectrum john chow i'm not Todd sure Solis. how we got there <laughs> i'm i barely understand how we got to todd solon yeah something about being edgy yeah um yeah so now we don't have to keep teen creeps to such a tight timeline and we can go back to playing voicemails so yeah we're so sorry that we have ignored that for so long yeah we are sorry um, okay, so uh, here's some shout outs to the people who have left reviews referencing farm to table pocket jalapeno dip. Uh, Sh- Shmandy Kane, <laughs> Fran Loves Books, Tallulah Tubman, GDM81, Lil Gwynny, <laughs> Lillian GB. Lil Gwynny sounds familiar. Yeah, Lil Gwynny. I might have, here's the thing I was reading them in a bad order on my phone last week, so there might be doubles. But, I feel like I've maybe a username on Twitter or something. Mm, mm, Lil Gwynny. Continue. Lillian GB. Jackie Marie. Mahalahan. <laughs> Erica Hassink. Jpipe28. Chex926. Candy Apples. <laughs> Cranber Tramps. Oh, Cranber Tramps is from last time. I remember Cranber Tramps. Yes, that name. that's a great <laughs> That's a great name. It's a great name. Um, thank you guys so much for leaving those reviews. And um, if you leave any reviews in the future referencing Farm to Table... Pocket jalapeno dip. Some of you referenced <laughs> avocado dip. That's fine. I still gave you a shout out. You'll get a shout out. I'm um, the one who said avocado dip, right? Yeah, you thought it was avocado canned avocado dip. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, you can follow our show on all the social media at Teen Creeps Pod. Um, you can uh read along with us. You have you are by no means expected to. Uh, do you know offhand what we're reading, Lindsay? My God, I don't. And I need oh, to be the prom dress. It. Oh, prom by dress, Lil Litka. I uh, got requested ages ago because it has a very creepy color with a yellow prom dress hanging on a closet. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, We're, and it it's a hard to find book, but it's rated really well on Goodreads. A lot of people like it. Oh, cool. So I hope it's good. If not, you're a liar. You're cursed. <laughs> Um, we curse you. If not, a uh, curse on your household. <laughs> um, what what other biz do we have, Lindsay? Is that it? Probably it. Yeah. Hey, check out our Patreon. If you uh, oh, give yeah. to our Patreon, we already we if you already give to our Patreon, we really really appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Um, you help produce our show. Yeah. Oh, uh, uh, this month's outside genre episode. We could say that. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Once I we just picked it. Look it up on my phone. Thank you to Scott. Scott, no last name. Thank you to patron Scott, patron saint of this month's episode. Yeah, and we are reading Colorless Sukuro Tazaki and His Years of Pilgrimage by Murakami. Yep. And that's going to be pretty good. I read uh, the first three sentences and then they seemed good. Cool. So <laughs> I was just making sure <laughs> I, I downloaded it. It will to my be Kindle. my first book of his and I have always wa- wanted to read uh, Murakami. I read uh, Dance, Dance, Dance. Revolution. Revolution. You know, when I was in... Uh, and it was hard to follow? It- <laughs> 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 when I was in high school, we had... Um, we had... Uh, Desks. No. Uh, Teachers. My mother made me go to youth group, and there was this really weird kid at my school. Jason Chow. Who we had a... It was... Yeah, John Chow. No, missionary John Chow. John Chow. Oh, you know what? I think I went to high school with a Jason Chow. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a talent show mm-hmm. at the church and this one kid came into dance dance revolution he was really good mm. he got so sweaty <laughs> <laughs> he's like drenched yeah in sweat. i believe it it's hard but he was like really good but he also like was one of those you know those kids that were really intense about ddr that like like would like it was stomp like, like crazy yes and like get extremely sweaty yes like that you have to here's the thing about ddr if you really want to do it it's not a telegenic sport no from far away it does not no look impressive no it you look weird yeah but you know what props to you him look jumpy and weird yeah you do you like stuttery jumpy and weird yeah um mike has been playing this japanese um game what's it called bang dream girls band party Ooh. it's like 
It's like Dance Dance Revolution, but it's an app on your phone, so you're just doing it with your thumbs. Oh, cool. And you have to hit at the right time. It's Yeah, it's like Dance Dance Revolution, Rock I've Band, etc. I've been looking for a phone game. Um, it is so hard. Really? I watch him do it, and he's very good at it, mm-hmm. and I feel like I'm losing my mind. Like, really? I can't watch him do it for too long, because I'm like, bleh, 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 help. I've been playing very bad at Cooking it. Madness and Wordscapes. They're fine. I need a new phone game because I stopped playing Best Fiends. I played every once in a while, but I, I just I don't play it a ton. And then I found out that there's a Miss Fisher game on the phone. I've been playing that and that was tight. But then I finished it. Mm. I don't play games on my phone because they're too addicting. They're very addictive. I can't do it. You know what I have started doing because you talked about it. I think on the last episode of the podcast, maybe is um, I'm on Duolingo. So learning fun. Spanish and Japanese. So fun. It's very fun. Get out there and do Duolingo, guys. It's it's very fun. The owl is a little bit of a harasser. I accidentally, I was like, yeah, I'll do your seven-day Duolingo Plus trial and then forgot to cancel it. So now oh. I just have Duolingo Plus and that owl can go fuck himself. <laughs> I don't need him. <laughs> uh, okay, so get out there. Do Duolingo. Leave us a nice review on iTunes. If you mention uh, Farm to Table, uh, any kind of dip, really. Mm-hmm. Um, we uh, any kind of pocket dip. Pocket uh, dip. We will shout you out on the show or any it, kind of farm to table owl. Yeah, farm to table <laughs> owls. Um, if uh, oh, Patreon dot com slash Teen Creeps for all of our uh fun extra content, and also you get to help produce the show, which is really helpful. Yeah, um, thank you so much to all of our supporters. We really do appreciate and it. all of our future supporters. Yeah. I noticed actually some of you mentioned that you're Patreon supporters in your iTunes review, and that was really cool. Oh, thank you. Um, that's really nice. Uh, and um, that's all that's for all. this week. Yep. Keep it creepy. Forever <laughs> Dog. This has been a Forever Dog production. Executive produced by Dog. Kelly Nugent, Lindsay Katai, Brett Boehm, Joe Cilio, Dog. and Alex Ramsey. For more original podcasts, please visit foreverdogpodcasts.com and subscribe to our shows on Apple Podcasts, Spotify,